So, Vasyl Lomachenko versus Guillermo Rigondeau is taking place this Saturday. I'm sure most of you already know my views on the fight. My opinion has not wavered. I'm still picking the same winner that I was picking from the very beginning, the moment this fight was announced. But just as a way of recapping and maybe analysing the fight from a slightly different angle, I'm going to give you my final thoughts. Now, Guillermo Rigondeau relies a lot on his punching power. This is something that a lot of people may not have considered. And it's something which I didn't really recognize with Rigondeau until the Nanito Denier fight. That's what really opened my eyes to how much he relies on punching power. That's not to say that punching power is the only attribute he has. Some people are going to misconstrue what I'm saying right now and interpret it as me saying, all oh, Guillermo Rigondeau has power, he has nothing else. Nothing else that he does contributes to his success in the ring. That is definitely not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that punching power is one of the main factors that leads him to victory in most of his fights, or a lot of his fights, certainly his most major victories, like his victory over Donaire. Rigondeau is a decent defensive fighter. When we're talking about elite level, for an elite level fighter, his defense is decent, but it's not amazing. He don't have a Floyd Mayweather level defense. He don't have a Pernell Whitaker level defense. You see, Pernell Whitaker was a guy who wasn't known as a puncher, who went into many fights where he couldn't hurt the opponent, but he just managed to win the fight purely by out finessing them and out slicking them. A good example would be his fight with Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. Now, he didn't officially win that fight, but most people at the time, most neutral observers, believed that he not only won against Chavez Sr., but he schooled him and won by quite a margin. But he was fighting in front of tens of thousands of screaming Mexicans who were cheering every punch that even landed on Pernell Whitaker's glove or missed him by a couple inches. So, yeah, a lot of people felt like he was hard done by. But the point I'm making here is Chavez Sr. was one of the best pressure fighters boxing has ever seen. That's how good he was as a pressure fighter. But yet he wasn't able to inflict any damage on Pernod Whitaker for the entire fight. Any serious damage anyway. Very unusual position for Chavez Sr. to be in. But Pernod Whitaker was able to just outslick him. He never hurt. Chavez had a tremendous chin. He never hurt Chavez. Chavez was relentless the whole fight, but Whitaker was so blessed defensively. He was so slick that he was able to go in there against one of the best pressure fighters of all time and barely get hit with a clean shot the whole fight. Rig and Doe don't have that kind of defense. If he's in there with someone who he can't hurt, who is a relentless pressure fighter, very good at cutting off the ring, who has an iron jaw, Rigondeau is going to be in trouble because defensively, he's not as relaxed or slick as a Pernod Whitaker or as a Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather can lay on the ropes, use that Philly shell defense, and you can't hit him with a bag of rice. Rigondeau not like that. He relies on his legs a lot more for his defense. He does have upper body movement too, but it's nowhere near as reliable or as slick and he's nowhere near as assured with it and as confident and comfortable with it as the two other fighters I've just mentioned. So how does Rigondeau maintain his defense? How does he avoid getting hit? He does so by intimidating his opponents with that big left hand. I actually think that Guillermo Rigondeau is one of the most underrated punches in boxing. He doesn't have the highest knockout percentage, the highest knockout ratio, but that's largely in my view because he doesn't tend to go for the knockout. Rigondeau's one of those kind of guys who will hurt you and he's happy to then sit back after hurting you and continue boxing and continue counter punching. He's, he's like Adonis Stevenson minus the killer instinct. When Stevenson hurts you, he's going for you. Whereas Rigondeau will hurt you and a lot of the times he'll just lay back and he's happy to keep you in your place. That's how he 
avoids getting hit a lot because he will intimidate you with punching power. And the classic example is that Nanito Donaire fight. Going into that fight, Donaire was a pound for pound fighter. Not only that, but he was a destructive puncher with both hands. He was knocking people out left, right and center. He was dropping opponents all over the place. Even though he was coming up in weight, he was still a naturally bigger man than Guillermo Rigondeau. He'd had more fights. He was more proven. Rigondeau had looked shaky in terms of punch resistance. He'd been hurt in several fights. So I never imagined that Guillermo Rigondeau would do anything other than box on the back foot from the open bell against Nonito Donaire. But boy, was I wrong. I thought there's no way that a guy as small as Rigondeau with the suspect chin is going to stand in front of a bigger man who's a tremendous puncher with both hands, who's never showed any chin issues. He's never going to stand in front of that guy. But that's exactly what Guillermo Rigondeau did against Nonito Donaire. From the opening bell, Guillermo Rigondeau drew a line in the sand. He looked Nonito Donaire in the eye. He cracked him with a left hand and he said, don't cross the line. Do not cross that line. And Onito Donair didn't cross the line. <laughs> Once he felt the power that Rigondeau had in that left hand, he changed his whole approach to the fight and decided that he was going to try and attempt to outbox Rigondeau. It didn't work. It wasn't until very, very late in that fight that Donair decided to gamble. He said to himself, you know what? I can't outbox this guy. It's not working. I'm going to have to gamble. When he did gamble, he managed to knock Guillermo Rigondeau down. It was more of a balanced shot. Don't get it twisted. It was a legitimate knockdown. But Guillermo Rigondeau didn't appear to me to be hurt by it. But Donaire then opened up following that knockdown. And when he did open up, once again, he got cracked several times with that big left hand. And that was what led to Donaire's eye getting mashed up, basically. His eye was all swollen and what have you. And again, that's an indication of how hard Guillermo Rigondeau really hits. Because whenever he cracks someone clean with that left hand, just look what happens to their face. Look what happened to that Japanese guy that he fought. His face was a mess. Look what happened to Donaire when he cracked him with a left hand on the eye. Look what happened to Jazza Dickens. This guy's breaking eye sockets and jaws and, <laughs> and all kinds of things with those hard, bony little hands that he's got. But yeah, without the punching, you take the punching power away from Guillermo Rigondeau. He don't have Mayweather defense. He don't have Pernil Whitaker defense. He's quite vulnerable, actually. Now, how does this relate to Vasyl Lomachenko? Well, I believe Rigondeau's chances in this fight all hinge on whether or not he can hurt Vasyl Lomachenko or hit him hard enough to get his respect. I believe Rigondeau's chances all hinge on that. If he doesn't hit him hard enough to get his respect, then Lomachenko's going to overwhelm him and eventually either win on points comfortably or actually stop him in the second half of the fight. I don't know for a fact whether Rigondeau can hurt Lomachenko. Um, will he be able to land a shot? Rigondeau's very skillful. We know that. He's very accurate. I guess it depends on how how much respect Lomachenko has for Guillermo Rigondeau going into the fight. If he's got a certain amount of respect and he's expecting a tougher test than he's ever had before, then he'll probably make sure that he minimizes the mistakes and maybe boxes more cautiously than he's boxed against the likes of a Nicholas Waters or you know some of the other people he's faced recently. And if he does that, then Rigondeau might not be able to land many punches in the first place to be able to get any serious respect from Vasyl Lomachenko. But I guess, you know, it's kind of contradicting the argument by saying, well, he might start off with respect, so then Rigondeau don't need to hit him with a big left hand. But the cadence of the fight is going to be dictated, in my view, by whether Rigondeau can land a big left hand and get Lomachenko's respect or hurt him with it. The cadence of the fight will be decided by that. Uh, if he lands a left hand on Lomachenko and nothing happens, 
Lomachenko smiles and laughs about it, then that's a wrap as far as I'm concerned. There's no way that, that Rigondeaux's going to leave that ring without a loss on his record. So that's what I'm actually expecting. I don't think Rigondeaux's left hand is going to be enough. I think early on in the fight, Rigondeaux might do quite well. But as the rounds progress, I think that incessant movement that Lomachenko has, the work rate, the way that he's able to overwhelm opponents mentally with his constant motion, constant switching up of angles, I believe eventually that's going to get to Rigondeaux too. And Rigondeaux will either just shut down and try and survive the 12 rounds, or he'll end up getting pinned down and stopped. So, yeah, I'm just reiterating what I've said in previous videos. I'm taking Vasyl Lomachenko to win this fight. I can't rely on Guillermo Rigondeaux's punching power, getting him out of the woods this time, because he's never fought anybody even close to the level of a Vasyl Lomachenko as a professional. You could say the same for Lomachenko in terms of Rigondeaux, but Lomachenko at least has the size advantage. Even though he's gone in there with a very skilled man, he's the much bigger man. He's the younger man. He's the fresher man. So, yeah, I'm sticking to my guns. I'm saying Vasyl Lomachenko wins this fight and wins it decisively. If Rigondeaux is able to beat Lomachenko and beat him convincingly, then we really are looking at a phenomenon in boxing, historically. We really are looking at an all-time great if he's able to get rid of Vasyl Lomachenko. Again, not just a bigger man, but also one of the greatest amateurs of all time. Also a man who's won multiple championships inside his first 10 fights, who won a world title. What was it in his third fight or fourth fight? I can't remember what it was. He beat Gary Russell Jr. He beat Nicholas Walters, so on and so forth. So if Rigando, the smaller, older guy, is able to beat Lomachenko, <sighs> levels <laughs> he's just shown me and shown all of us some serious levels if he's able to pull off that victory but i'm not a gambling man but if i was my money would be firmly on vasyl lomachenko in this fight so yeah from a stylistic point of view if they were both the same size i'd certainly give guillermo rigando a hell of a lot better chance but they're not both the same size somebody in a previous video of mine. I can't remember if it was actually a Rigondeaux Lomachenko video, but they tried to debate me. They tried to challenge me on my assertion that size matters in boxing. And they said, look at Mike Tyson. He proves that size don't matter. You know, I, I'm not really sure where people are going with this, <laughs> but just to shoot down that argument, Mike Tyson is the exception. He's not the rule. Mike Tyson was a freak athlete. Most five foot, 10 inch heavyweights are not going to get anywhere near a heavyweight championship. Yeah, especially not in today's boxing world. The vast majority of five, 10 heavyweights, and there are plenty of them around. They're not going to get anywhere close to fighting for a heavyweight title. Tyson was a needle in a haystack. He was an exception to the rule. And so were most of the smaller heavyweights like the Joe Frazier's and Rocky Marciano's, yeah, occasionally a tiny guy will come along and have success against bigger guys, but that is not the norm, people, <laughs> in case you hadn't noticed. You can reel off a hundred or more short heavyweights who came and tried and got nowhere near a heavyweight championship, yeah? Whereas if you're a big guy as a heavyweight, you've got a much better chance of getting close to a heavyweight championship. Of course, size matters. If size didn't matter, why do we even have weight divisions? Why don't we put welterweights in with heavyweights if size don't matter? Of course size matters. So anyway, <laughs> let me end this video right here. I've given you my final thoughts. I believe Vasyl Lomachenko is going to win this fight. Rigondeaux may have success and look good early on, but I expect him to eventually get overwhelmed, fade down the stretch and either go into survival mode and lose on points or actually get stopped. Again, if he manages to win the fight, there are no praises high enough for Guillermo Rigondeaux as far as I'm concerned. That's the way I see it. So, yeah, let me know how you see it.
Drop your comments in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out.